But can I just also say to you, uh, Hazel, I mean, the fact that your husband was adopted, there had to be some kind of a status there uh, as distinct from the, the uh, ordinary yeah, person. Yeah. That had to be, I mean, and I mean, as we well know, most of the people who were doing the farming were all Europeans, or white at least. Mm -hmm. And in consequence, I mean, no, no, Labour was, was were, were coloured people, but I mean, there were quite an amount of uh, white people there, and there must have been, there, there had to be kind of uh, a, a social life a, a little above the, the, the norm. Um, not with the white farmers. They were very racist. Were they? Oh, yeah. My daughter went to school, um, it was a private mm -hmm. uh school was mainly white. They had just started having um, coloured children in hmm. and um, there was a birthday. This would, there would have been in sort of, uh, what, about six or seven mm -hmm. years old. And um, one of the children having a birthday party invited everybody except my daughter. Mm -hmm. So it was like that all the time? Oh, yeah. That's most unusual. How did your daughter react to that? Well, I had to sort of fiddle around a bit so that we well, had I mean, to do seven, something else. A seven-year-old is seven very seven difficult. Well, but these very, were very yeah. difficult. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was that a must lot have of been that. a worry to you. That would, I'd imagine, that would be a worry. Well, I knew what was happening, so we just had to learn how to cope with it. And she accepted that. As and um, yeah, but it wasn't everybody, you see, mm -hmm. with the odd one. But it was the farmers that were the worst. Mm -hmm. Well, tell yeah. me, how long were you actually in Rhodesia or in Zimbabwe? Um, well, I went out there in '66, mm -hmm. and I'm back now about six years. So you you were a long time there. You were a long time there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I really had a great life, and I had friends, mm -hmm. all races, all religions, mm -hmm. all, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot about the different cultures. I love cultures, mm -hmm. learning about them, and um, oh. I really did like it, but things have got very bad now. Yes, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see, when we changed over, when Mugabe took over and then the whites went in mm -hmm. charge, that made a difference in my husband's life. Uh -huh. In what way? And, um, well, now we could go up, mm -hmm. whereas before, yes, we had to be down. Yes, I know what you mean. Because of him. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we would be at things with the president and uh, with friends with ministers mm -hmm. and, you know, we were all up in that um, uh, yes, you're, you're top line. Yeah, you just started Because you could do it then. Now, the, the awkward mm -hmm. question I'm going to ask you, uh, when did your husband die? In 2000. In 2000. Yeah. And you, did you decide there and then to pull up the sticks and come home? No. I was going to, yeah. Was no. Yeah. The thing was that um, things had just about started going down. Mm. Yes, of course. And it was getting very, it was getting difficult. And the thing is, women, the way women are, are treated, mm -hmm. um, you know, you didn't really have the same, right. you had to be more careful. If you were in a widow there, what would it be like? Yeah, that's the thing, because you haven't got a man. You haven't got a man. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I managed because people, I mean, I don't mind asking somebody for mm -hmm. help, but it was okay. But um, things had got wrong and, um, you see, I always tried to help uh, people. Anybody who worked for me, um, I tried to educate them and let them get on and have a better job mm -hmm. than just cleaning the house or cleaning the garden. There's one very important question I want to mm -hmm. ask before we finish. Yes, we're coming towards the end. Um, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. When, no problem. When you came back here, mm -hmm. how did you find it? Life here? Was it difficult for oh you? Oh, my God. I mean, I was always back on holidays, and, but that's very different. Yeah. But coming back to live... To live here? My gosh, I was an immigrant. I sometimes still feel I'm an immigrant. You know, because coming back on holiday is one thing, but coming back to actually yeah. live, you have mm -hmm. to learn the everyday things mm -hmm. and whew, to cope with it. And um, it wasn't easy. No, well, I mean, if you were but there from 1966 and coming back in 2000, I mean, you were a stranger time. in your own country. People yeah. that you know had gone and were married and right. emigrated and everything. It's a different life. It was completely different. Mm -hmm. And I things had changed radically in Ireland. Yeah, but the thing is, you, you remember when you left. Mm -hmm. So I'd be remembering what it was like in 66. And you're expecting <laughs> and it's you to change so much back. here. Yeah. You're like the young that comes back from American holidays. Oh, you changed as you built a house here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. This sort of thing. And I, I was always in, interested to know how you really felt it. Was it a shock? Like you went, where will I get insurance? What is it? It was amazing that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you had to start a complete Just new organisation well, of your yeah. life. Yeah, because I couldn't find food. Mm -hmm. That was my now was my everyday food. Mm -hmm. Because now potatoes are not my everyday food now. Mm -hmm. They were when I went out there. Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. <laughs> and it was quite a, yeah, it was quite quite difficult. Did you miss it when you came back here? 
Did you miss the life in Rhodesia? Uh, well, in, in a color. way, in a way. I'm just trying to cope with the, mm. the life here. <laughs> How did, how did you, you were, you often said to me about the government here, this is a side one I'm going to say, and um, that uh, things haven't changed. Oh, things, things haven't, haven't changed. changed. Now, so tell, us, tell me why you, tell yes. me why you say things haven't changed. Yeah, because it's on. the same, because being living away, when you look at things, you look at it from outside. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes talking the way things had been here and talking sometimes to a minister, somebody going to wanting to be voted for and whatnot. And I would say, I think all you guys were trained by Mugabe. <laughs> <laughs> now, our third guest this afternoon is a guy I know fairly well. <laughs> and he's on a visit from, from Birmingham in England. And before we start asking him other questions, I think we might ask you, what, what's your reaction to to the troubles you've been having in Birmingham the last few weeks? Well, they were quite frightening. Like yourselves, we first seen it on television from London mm -hmm. and were horrified by the, the violence and the, the, the vandalism, and especially aimed towards the police. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was horrendous. And But as I said, like you, we felt distant from it because it was down in London. Mm -hmm. When it started to spread to Bristol, we kind of knew then it was coming our way and mm -hmm. it would only be days before it would happen which it did, mm -hmm. you know. so uh, it was frightening. And as I said, I think when you watch these things on the television and you get the commentary, it, it always that much greater mm -hmm. than, you know, if you were probably there because you only see a certain part of it mm -hmm. where with television you see a wider mm -hmm. spectrum. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but when this happened in Birmingham, I mean, it started up at the, the council offices and it walked straight down New Street, which is the main uh, shopping area it in the is, city that's centre. the main turf area, and it went along Cormor Road, which yes, is of the, course. the banking and business area. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing the damage that was done to the shop funds, the banks. They was even tried to pull out the cash machines. Mm -hmm. And they succeeded in getting that out of the wall, but mm -hmm. couldn't obviously yep. uh, break it open to get the money. Mm -hmm. And there was three people killed. Well, that, that happened. really brought it home to us. That happened outside on the Dudley Road in Winston Green. Mm. And I think it gave us a wake-up call because uh, in spite of what we've seen, we never expected anybody to be killed or die from it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it changed things even with the media because where they were concerned about the riots in the shops now it became focused on that it right. could turn mm. into a racist. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and uh, like it must have been very frightening for the senior citizens and in England in general to see this type of uh, rampant violence uh, running up and down the street, which seems to me to be sort of semi organized. They were using iPods and all sorts of different uh, exactly. ways to communicate with different groups uh, as such. And uh, it seemed very, very frightening. It wasn't just, it seemed to me not to be random violence just for the sake of violence, which uh, always, uh, of course, when any, there's any disturbance, there's always somebody's going to create some sort of yes. uh, ruckus. And uh, of course, this was very difficult. Uh, and a huge amount of property was destroyed and burnt. And, and uh, quite a lot of people were, you know, mowed, injured, uh, all sorts of things. And it seems to me that the that the the effect on the senior citizens in England, which I, I think the percentage is about the same as here, yeah. about twelve percent of the population is over sixty-five, and uh, they want to know where they're going to go from here politically, etc. Well, obviously, straight away people kept out of town, and they were just shopped just locally, and then it spread to Wolverhampton and then West Brom, which is quite near us. And that, and people think, well, is this going to escalate coming into the, the suburbs? And that, fortunately, it didn't. I again, because of the deaths of the creation lads, uh, really did wake people up. And uh, but people were fighting; they wanted to know things, and uh, you know, where's it going to end? And of course, on the, the radios, and that there was a great call for the police to take stiffer action when they went to court to get do you know stiffer penalties. The, the courts mustn't be lenient with them. And that's what people were calling for. Now, after this, they, on Thursday, actually, announced on their local uh, tech TV that they had arrested 614, had been up before the court. They posted pictures of another 300 that they wanted uh, to interview and they were asking the public to name them. So th they did it quite well. But as I say, the pe older people were just thinking, well, what's happening now? And 
getting back to it, with the sentences being passed, our televisions and radios are going on, uh, having to go at the police for being so tough with them. They're saying that the sentences that are being issued are, are too harsh and that. But, you know, I really feel that, and I think a lot of the OP people, well, look, how are you going to curb it? If we don't take further action or stiffer action, then it'll just happen and it'll keep on happening. Mm. And I was amazed myself listening to radio that, um, that people could be swayed in, in, in a couple of days, you know, for what they wanted. And when it was given out, then it's too harsh. Mm. Because one guy got for stealing his shirt from the Armani Superstore, he got uh, two years. And he was saying for stealing his shirt. But then when it transpired, he found, that, no, it wasn't just that he was walking by and took up the shirt. This guy did have a, a criminal record. So mm -hmm. what does one do? An opportunity. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Just one point on that, Des, if, if I can just bring it in here, Austin. I mean, when the troubles first started in London, which began in Tottenham Court Road, I mean, there was an element of these are the colour people kicking off. But we know now that it wasn't, it wasn't a racist thing. No, no right uh, as well as everything. And I have to say, in fairness, if up in, up in uh, Winston Grinch, which you and I know well because our grandparents lived there. That's right. Uh, up there, it was a, 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 an Asian man who really set the thing off and told them to go home and grab, catch, catch themselves on, really. That's right. He was very moving. He was absolutely brilliant. And... So much so that, as I say again, on the radio stations, which I listen to, thing, our local uh, BBC thing, mm. they were actually calling that this man should get the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, he was well so moved by his action that his words were, you want more killing? You want your sons to die? Well, come forward and we'll have these vibes. And he based that on the death of his son. His son because he was one of the three lads who were killed by the run that's runaway car. That's correct. Now I see there's seven men being charged with that crime. That's right. No, They've been before the courts, but obviously haven't a, de a date for uh, the trial yeah, hasn't course. been set yet. Yeah. But I mean, I, we know the area where, where it's happened, and the response from the Asian peoples, um, of, of a couple of several cultures there, because there's mixed cultures in Very there. much so. They and were absolutely brilliant. They stood by one another. And um, um, th th these lads were Muslim. Yes. And that. But, and I don't know, I wasn't aware of it, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. What was amazing that the day was saying how the Muslims and the Sikh community came the together. Sikh, yes, absolutely. And they opened up their, their, their temples and that, and they had things. And when they had a service before the funerals, it was held in Summerfield Park, which yeah. you know. Yes, I know. Yes, park. of course. And they reckoned there was 20,000 mm -hmm. from all over England yeah. come to attend this. And the other interesting thing was, uh, I can say it here because we're on community radio, it was a community radio of the Sikhs who, said, who helped out the police because they were actually televising the thing. They were, they were mm. televising, and a lot of us didn't even know that they had this. Yes, station. of course, and they directed the police. They would think, and in actual fact, as one of the guys from the car was running away, yeah. um, the, the policeman got into this car, <laughs> and that's how they caught the first... Um, Mind you, he was, probably, he was probably lucky that the police got him first because if the Sikhs got him, then would have chopped him in half. Well, that's true, but as I said, it was amazing. And as I said, I think really, you know, thinking about it, how things will pan out at the end, but at the moment, I think people are very aware of what happened. Mm -hmm. And again, to how can you do this in our city? Yes, of course. It may not have been our area, now, but they're very concerned mm -hmm. about how can this happen in our city? And Birmingham, as you know, is very multicultural. Absolutely. And... Um, you know, so people are worried, and hopefully it probably give us a wake up call. You know, because we always say, oh, "Well, we're not prejudiced, we're not this, and we're not yes, that," right. and you kind of get lackadaisical about it. Mm -hmm. and I think this is probably a wake up call that we've got to be aware that what happens within Birmingham uh, and the West Midlands as a mm whole. -hmm. Just May I ask a question here? Yeah. Why did it start? Was it, the, was it the shooting of that young man? Well, that was, that the, that was the, yes, yes, he was there. Uh, Initially, uh, they said that he had shot at the police and he yes, was shot back. And they but it has transpired that he didn't fire the gun. And they had this rally or protest outside the police station, which was his parents and a group of friends. And then it just spread.